Hello and welcome to another Tunfa Media lesson. This is our third Max lesson in our Max series, and we are rolling in our journey to synthesize and make our own modules. And since we're doing this cool analog style drum machine, in today's lesson, we're going to create hi-hat and claps module we're going to learn a lot about noise and we're going to borrow some synthesizing techniques from the legendary 808 with a nice modern touch we're also going to learn why the 808 clap is such a great one and why in general synthesized claps can be a lot more exciting than sampled claps okay so let's start with a new patcher let's start by making ourselves a trigger and this time we have a bunch of different triggers in fact we have three different triggers because we want a trigger for closed hi-hat sound open hi-hat and for the claps so we're going to use this select and we're going to select 51 this is for the claps it's a uh, E flat and 54 this is the F sharp and 58 for the, this B flat, kind of a classic general MIDI uh, mapping. And we can send this trigger. Uh, you know, let, let's just uh, make numbers. Like this is my clap. Let's move it here. My closed hi hat and my open hi hat. And we're gonna start with the hi hat sound. And like I said, we're gonna learn a lot about noise. So the star of this show is noise. In fact, the entire patch is going to be based on noise. Okay, so let's start with our hi-hat sound. We're going to generate just a simple noise, and we need some kind of an envelope, right? And we already know how to create these easy, uh, fast envelopes. Uh, so we're going to create a curve object. And now we have something a little bit tricky because we have two triggers that create different envelopes. So I want to show you a quick and easy way of doing closed and open hi-hat. If you remember from our last lesson, we can send a message, uh, a list of numbers to the curve object to operate this kind of a function. So what we're going to do is to send one message that will be uh, to go from 1, which is full amplitude, to 0, which is nothing, in a certain amount of time that this will be chosen with a number box. And we're going to create uh, a curve of minus 0.9. It's a pretty steep slope. This is for our uh, closed, closed hi-hat, right? And for our open hi-hat, instead of using a different number, well, you can. You can kind of do like different knobs, uh, different dials for, for open hi-hat and closed. I think in the 808, you, you do have uh, different dials for each one of them. Uh, but I like to create something that is a little easier, smaller, and kind of a little bit more natural to me. So I'm just going to create the same message, but instead of having this steep curve, just gonna have it a little bit shallower. And this is my open hi-hat, okay? So I need some number to send to these two um, messages. So we're going to create two message boxes. And the reason I'm making extra message boxes is remember from our first lesson, uh, we're making these boxes because we don't want to trigger these messages uh, every time we change a number in the number box. We're going to send these messages and we're going to trigger them with our actual trigger. And we can send a number and this number will be our decay. So every time I press F sharp, I'm actually triggering uh, the closed hi-hat message or the function, the curve. And every time I press this B flat, I'm gonna do exactly the same but just a little bit of a different message that's all all that's left to do right now is to just multiply my noise signal with my curve let's add a gain let's see what we have let's just add a gain something to send okay
hey, that sounds pretty nice already uh, because noise is awesome. Just noise can sound pretty cool. And what's great about noise is that it's random. And if you know me, you know that I love random and it makes everything in my taste a little more interesting uh, because every time you play the note, it's not exactly as the previous one, kind of fluctuation between uh, notes. Uh, but that's not enough for us. We want to tighten up the sound. So we can use a filter, a high pass filter. How can we make a high pass filter? So first of all, if we want like a steep curve, we can bring an object called filter design. And filter design allows you to create a very complicated filter. Uh, for example, this Butterworth, let's do it with four poles and a high pass. You can call all these things and then send it to a cascade, which is, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with biquad, it's kind of a, just a bunch of biquad uh, filters just um, stacked together. But you can do something else. And here you have different approaches. If you like these kind of hi-hats that has a little bit of a bell sound uh, and you want to have a little bit of a resonance in the cutoff point, uh, you can use the low res, which is a low pass filter with a resonance. But there's a problem here. Why would I use a low pass filter if I want high pass filter? Well, here's a very important concept to learn. You'll see that Max doesn't have any high pass filter other than the, this filter design, uh, but that's not a problem. Uh, you can make any low pass filter a high pass if you take the filtered signal and you subtract it from the original signal. And uh, let's bring back the gain. So now I have a, a high pass filter and also some resonance pick. Right, let's see if it works. Definitely works. I personally don't really like these kind of hi-hats. I'm more of a kind of buttery, soft hi-hat guy. So I'm going to use my easy one pole. And this is the easiest, smallest, the, the, the lowest CPU consumer probably of uh, filtering uh, because it's the most natural and has a kind of a very shallow roll off. So it doesn't have this steep cut, uh, which I like in hi-hats because I don't want my hi-hat to have this kind of a... Because I feel like if you put a very steep cut, you're getting some kind of a nasally hi-hat sound. The same thing. This is a low-pass filter. So we're going to take the filtered signal and we're going to subtract the filter signal with the original signal and it will make our high pass filter and we can put a number box so oh, let me just document it a little bit so this is the first one we did was decay and this one is filter like uh, 2000 and to my taste I feel like it sounds really awesome okay so let's add a nice touch. I would like to have uh, a random pan. So every time I hit a note, I would like to jump randomly in stereo. So I found out a pretty easy way of doing that. All you have to do is to take the signal and subtract it by left or right and send it to the other channel. But left or right should change randomly. The affected channel you're choosing should change in amplitude randomly. So how can we do that? So luckily we have the object called random. And we can say that we want the random to generate numbers between uh, 0 to 100. So 101 numbers because 0 is indeed a number. And I don't think random is uh, generating float numbers or decimal points numbers. Uh, so what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to hook this up to our trigger. Now, every time we hit a trigger, put a message here or something like that, so you'll see, we have a random number. 
but we need to convert it to the range of 0 to 1 in order to um, multiply it with the signal to create some kind of an amplitude change. Pretty easy. All you have to do is to, you can either divide it by 100, like that. In max is the same. Uh, if you're dividing a constant number, is actually doing multiplication. So there's, it, there is no difference. Uh, but anyway, we're going to just multiply it by 0 0.01. So now we're going to have random numbers between 0 and 1. We're going to send a signal uh, and it's going to be multiplied by this random number. And guess what? We're going to just basically have a change in volume. So randomly jumping in different volumes. This is great because now we can do something interesting about it. We can take the original signal and subtract it with the affected signal. And then I'm going to send one of them to left and the other to right. Left, right, you can change it, doesn't matter. Pretty awesome, huh? Okay, so, um, and we can add a selector, have it uh, in initially in one, double this because this is a stereo signal. So left, right, left, and I want it to be on the second input of the selector. And then I want the original signal uh, to be in my first input of the selector. I'm gonna add a toggle to select between random pan or just straight regular mono hi-hat. But because selector is expecting one and two to select between the different uh, channels uh, and toggle is bringing zero and one, uh, we are going to add one. And now we have a cool random button. Mono, classic, like we used to, kind of 808 sound. And if it's pressed on random, you'll hear the effect. And for me, that's it for the hi-hat sound. Uh, I feel like this is a great sounding hi-hat. It's natural, it's easy, it's noise, and I love noise. The randomness of noise makes it sound very dynamic. Okay, let's move on to the claps. Now, we're going to learn the technique used in the 808. And this is such a great technique, and we're going to use it uh, very interesting. Going to add some nice modern touch to it and create maybe a little more exciting clap than the original 808. But generally, we're going to do what pretty much the people behind 808 uh, did back in the 80s. So the 808 clap sound is extremely clever. It's basically taking a bunch of um, noises, noise like times five, I think, so you ha they have like five different n noise oscillators and they just sp um, spread them in delay one after another in an envelope that is like pretty fast. It's like just a, just a really, really fast. And the entire thing is just going through some kind of a bandpass filter. And this is why I said when we started this lesson that synthesized claps can be a lot more exciting than uh, sampled claps is because this is noise. It's random, so every clap is a little bit different than the other. So you get a very dynamic sounding clap. So noise time five, we're gonna do noise time six um, because we can. And we're gonna use the new MC stuff uh, from Max 8. We're gonna spread them in stereo so we have this super wide and cool clap. And let me just show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so we're gonna bring up MC noise and we're going to create chance six. We're going to create six instances of noise. Now we have to add some kind of an envelope. Now this time we're going to bring our nice friend the function, but we have six channels and each one of them has a different envelope. So we're going to create an MC function. We're going to tell it to be 
in a mode of curve and we're going to tell it to have six channels. Now look at that. We have a function, but now we have also this, um, these dots down here and it actually allows me to create different functions. And we can also add a candy cane effect. So each function will have a different color. So it's kind of great to tell different functions. And this is what we have to do. We have to, to tell this function to send out uh, the all of the functions together. We can do something like that. So these are all new max stuff. So MC target and we can take the we can take the number, the index of the function from here. And then we're going to send it to MC curve. And this is also should have six channels. Now, like any amp envelope, we have to multiply the signal with this envelope. So we're going to use MC multiply, and we can call call six channels for this one as well. Send all six instances to this part of the MC multiply, and all six instances of the curve to here. So you can actually do that in Max 7 uh, and it's relatively easy but Max 7 just will uh, ask you to do this individually six times. So you have this thing six times. right? So it's kind of a great improvement in Max 8 that you can create a lot of instances in one object. And we're going to send it to an object called MC Stereo and this is great because it gives me the option of taking a lot of channels and then sum them up to stereo. You can also add auto gain, nice feature. Let's connect MC gain. And we don't have to uh, to say how many channels because it will adopt these two channels. Remember we summed up all these six channels to two. So you can, you can actually see when you hover above uh, cables, you see how many channels. So six, 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 but then two. Okay, so now we're simply going to draw our sound. And let me zoom in, it will be easier. We can go in and basically shape our sound of our clap. Clap number one, and the second clap, and the second clap, I'm doing something like that. and want it like just next to it and this is just you know you, you're going to adjust it by taste and let's just bring this down for number five and six we're going to do something very very clever that uh really inspired uh this is actually the actual technique used in the 808 we're going to have a shallower curve and we're going to play with the decay and so it kind of give you the effect of reverb in the 808 you have decay for the claps and when you roll it up kind of have this almost like a reverb sound okay so okay and we're going to do exactly the same with number 6 now in the mc functions we can call each instance individually so we can call and it's called a uh, set value. And this is the one, two, three, four, five, right? So set value of five. And then I'm actually sending the regular message that we are used to send. So I want to send um, a message so I can change the decay of this thing. So let's go to number five so we can see that. And so set value for number five and tell, um, one zero one two three so tell the third point to move through the x axis and keep y zero and keep the curve around um yeah and we can copy that just call it for six put this number and i think there's a way actually to call a few values together and send the, the exact message but um uh, no, it works for me like that as well. All right, I cut some portions of this video uh, because I made a few mistakes uh, and I didn't want you to wait for me to figure this out. So 
uh, first of all, I <laughs> accidentally forgot. Uh, I put one and dollar sign instead of dollar sign one. So just make sure that you do all this stuff uh, correctly. And also, uh, I would suggest you to uh, take this and uh, bound it so you won't go accidentally below the, the point. It will mess up your uh, your shape. So like a minimum of 170, I guess, and a maximum of uh, 300. Okay, let's see if it works. Cool, awesome. Numbers. This one is not connected. All right, I'm a mess today. Okay, and now... Great, so we have a clap, but it's not enough. Doesn't sound like a clap, right? Uh, this is because we have to send this to a filter. So we're gonna send it to a bandpass filter called Resin. So we do MC because these are two channels and Resin. And we're going, let's start with zeros. And we're going to set uh, the number basically tune this number to what we like and then we can set it to the initial if we want it to be fixed let's go like to one yeah like almost two uh -huh. here it is Here's our, our 808 sound. So we can play with the decay here. Let's just document it a little bit. So this is decay. And that's it. <laughs> we play we just play we're just playing with the decay here. This is the only uh thing that we want to have in this module, unless you want also to have the filter, but if you want to keep it classic, um you may want to just keep the filter like that so you can uh, uh you can put these numbers in uh if you like them to make to be the initial numbers and the fixed numbers as well so that's it we have a nice hi-hat sound with decay that works together for the open and closed we have a filter And we have some nice claps. Okay, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more. Um, I'm trying to upload a video every week. And if you like this patch, you can download this patch for free and try it out yourself. You can add it to your set. Uh, you can add it as a module, as a B patcher. Um, or you can just download it to just learn the patch uh, in more depth so thank you for watching i hope you learned something for this and see you next time stay tuned